good evening friends welcome to the india power talk india power talk is a knowledge sharing initiative we invite international thought leaders and domain experts to share their insights experiences and strategies related to business and the economy today we will talk about trade between india and the us to talk about us india commerce and how best to support it we have a guest who is perfectly qualified to share her expert views dr purnima voria founder and ceo of the national us india chamber of commerce with its global headquarters in denver colorado from where it serves all the 50 states of us and it, its asian headquarters is in jaipur rajasthan india nuicc's mission is to promote bilateral trade and investments between the united states and india and other parts of the globe NUICC serves the small, medium, and large corporations with government and business relationships that results in business deals. Dr. Vorya, welcome to India Power Talk, okay. and thank and thank you for taking time to speak with me. This being the International Women's Day, it is a special honor to have a recipient of the Business Woman of the Year Award as a guest. Or may I request you, Dr. Vorya, to begin by talking about. the national us india chamber of commerce and how you came to found it i feel that uh, national us india chamber of commerce was a baby born by the uh, wish of the senators and congressmen mayors and business leaders in united states but the most important person i owe this to is vice president of india shri late bharu singh ji shekhawat sahab he inspired me encouraged me and gave me his blessings because i went to him and i said papa i love both the nations very much and i want to bridge the gap between the two and the two ways i know of is uh, by improving international relations and the second is economic development between the two nations so this is what prompted to the birth of national us india chamber of commerce in 2005 I don't want India's image to be like world vision, page 665, third world country and so forth. I see India as incredible India, a royal India coming from Rajasthan. So, so that is the reason I wanted to show India through my eyes and the business opportunities because we were only talking about nuclear deal at the time and US India business opportunities as we know today was non-existing at that time. So I thought of creating something by which we I'll create the right image and right international relationship between US and India and at the same time I would also grow the US India business opportunity so that is why I think it was a need based organization is what everybody told me and whoever I talked which was 47 who is who of united states said how can we help you and I said come on my board and give <laughs> it the credibility it a new organization leads and all 47 of them are on the board i think it's the credibility the uh, the organization's uh, trust that they built is what led to the emergence of nuicc uh, it was a need based organization commerce between india and us is a strong and has a great future potential uh, when the world economy begins to bounce back Uh, from the downturn caused by the pandemic in which sectors do you see the greatest growth potential between india and american commerce india is going to lead the 21st century i have no doubt about it when you say what opportunities if you have seen our prime minister who is such a able leader and i'm a big fan of his uh, has created these opportunities for india and the image in india for the world has gone surpassed india's ranking has uh, has been uh you know uplifted in a very big magnitude um of uh, numbers uh, and we got the temporary seat in the united nations but prime minister of india said that ai opportunities 883 million dollar by 2023 i believe so uh, you know artificial intelligence is going to lead the way so when you talk about opportunities Uh, there are defense and aerospace manufacturing opportunity our chamber did that with minister shri padnayak ji the minister of state and yes. brought drone technologies we brought uh, companies that have all these fancy all new high tech technologies to help india manufacture 
the defense products in India. So with defense and water, you know that water and waste management is a need of India globally. It's a global crisis. We just did, as you mentioned, with Minister Gajendra Singh Ji Shekhawat. Mm -hmm. I think that was incredible. It was a global conference, WWM 2021, and it was led by the minister himself. I see. My wish for the minister is, because this is a global crisis, his, he should step up to the plate and lead the world. Just like Harshwardhan Singh Ji, uh, our Absolutely. minister uh, for health, is leading the WHO as the chairman of WHO, I would like to see our water resource minister lead the world in this global water crisis we all are facing. So that's another opportunity. Auto industry is another one. India can, is already manufacturing a lot of auto parts, but I think electric vehicles, battery, yes. uh, there is wise, you know, stations, charging stations, you name it, and every city can become smart city with all these. With that, manufacturing, of course, of goods, uh, because the United States want partners in India, and India wants to make it in India. So technology transfer, for that reason, is an opportunity. And uh, security, as you know, cybersecurity, we are very good in all this. So, um, you know, you see so many hackathons and whatnot, and you have seen that uh, a lot of multinationals were hacked, including federal agencies of the United States were hacked. This is a serious concern. I think India can step up to the plate and help with this um, cybersecurity and so forth. And I think uh, medical equipment, I mean, India can really import a lot of medical equipment and then also start manufacturing. I think we have opportunities that we didn't even think about now. And as the 21st century is evolving itself, the fourth industrial revolution and fifth industrial revolution, the India's best thing is the relationship. So it's very important that with these opportunities, relationship is going to be a very important key thing, which is the fifth industrial revolution, where we talk about business with impact and humanitarian touch to business. I see, great, no, outstanding insight, I must say. And, and what you say is absolutely right. In fact, our prime minister, to my mind, is the only global leader who has actually, as soon as he assumed power in 2014, the first thing what he did was to improve the ease of doing business, the, the ranking of ease of doing business. I don't yes, think yes. so. Any global leader uh, for you know has really worked so seriously to improve the, their country's ranking, and he has been constantly asking the states, the the, the local administration, to keep on improving the ease of doing business. I think that's really incredible, and we really owe a lot of thanks to our prime to our prime minister and the entire team. Absolutely. Uh, I also think that when you talk about opportunities, Nitin, I feel like promotion of experts from India, the first priority of Indian prime minister, the schemes of one district, one product, ODOP, and yes. converting districts into export hubs. DEH and import substitution are most popular and important in India. The whole export infrastructure, institutional and physical have been developed even at the district level at, at this present time yes. from what I'm hearing. And uh, district export promotion committees have been set up. I know for, uh, for first hand from Rajasthan, I think my friend PR Sharma is leading and he is uh, the one of the Rajasthan export industry uh, expert, and uh, they have been formed and action plans at district level have been right. prepared. Similarly, state and national export strategies have also been prepared. This is the first time in India this initiative have been taken up right at the grassroots level, just like you said, Nitin. And the Indian products are being patented, tested, and R&D infrastructure is being developed. And the U.S. government also must make strategies to get befits out of this. And I think they are. There are policy changes behind the closed doors that is being Absolutely. talked about. So uh, I think that's my take on that. What would be your very top, maybe one or two key items advice, key advice would you give to the American players looking to enter Indian market? First of all, there are a lot of things American companies must do when they are going embarking into any country, much less India. India, they have an advantage of because India has 
uh, English as their language. So that is the first thing I feel that uh, very beneficial to US companies. They must, first of all, do their due diligence, find the right partners. I feel that uh, they really need to consult with somebody that they can trust. And usually they come to us because we are a resource hub for them. And uh, they ask us to help them do the due diligence, find the right partners, set up all the appointments, do the trade mission to India with them. So, uh, and they should, a business should, before they even think of India, should discuss the pro and cons of Absolutely. if India is a good market for them. Uh, that's one thing. And go to the person who can facilitate those connections. Yes, so that's the second thing. I would say that attend the programs uh, that are put by our chamber events. Uh, we always have our events at the Rich Carlson and we want to educate people before they go on to India. Get the education and talk to an expert. Let me let me turn, you know, let me look at the other way around. What what do you think Indian companies need to understand uh, about the U.S. market uh, to succeed? And what advice would you give give to the Indian companies who wish to establish offices in U.S.? I would give the very same advice to them as well. Go to somebody who knows what they're doing. For example, I've been here in the United States for 45 years. I know the cultural nuances. I know what works, what doesn't work. And uh, Americans don't want, care about building a relationship. They'll, they'll most of the time never invite you to home. Never tell you about their wife, their children and whatnot. I always share this. So when you are uh, coming, Come to the person, not the IT guy who's your relative, <laughs> and say, Ki, I want to come to US, uh, but how, how, will, how can I do this? Wrong approach. You must know, do the due diligence, find the right partners before you come to US. Many people just come and then nothing happens. And they go very disappointed and they say that, oh, there's nothing that can happen with the US. That's not right because you have not done your due diligence, you didn't find the right partners, you didn't go to the right person, be ready to pay a consultant for what you want to do in India. Please don't tell them. I get daily calls, hundreds of calls. We will give you a top percentage pretty much. <laughs> but, you know, they are not ready to pay a consultant because in India we have a lot of Gyantanji and we get a lot of consultancy free. So people are not willing to pay. Uh, and I, I'm being very down to earth when I say that because I know my country. I love my country, my motherland, as well as I love no, my I'll country. tell you, you know, these things uh, may sound trivial and may sound uh, sometimes silly, but I am telling you uh, from a person who has worked for 45 years in US, you know, it coming from you is very important. We may, many of us, we may know, but re emphasizing, restating those the obvious is sometimes helps to my mind. The cultures of India and US are quite different. Okay. Okay. Uh, of course, both of us are very big and diverse countries, so it's difficult to make generalizations, I would say. Uh, in your work with companies seeking to cooperate, uh, what cultural issues uh, you have experienced particularly and how, uh, how do you think uh, can be best overcome? Just, you know, very, uh, very strong one or two good points uh, for, for both the companies from US and India. I think you have to be bold and beautiful when you are dealing with American companies. Most of the time, I notice when I come to India, when I'm talking to people, Nathan, people don't look at me in the eyes because that's our Indian culture. It's seen as flirtation. So people tend to look here and there and I have hard time because I faced the same thing when I came to United States. So complete opposite in both the countries. Here Absolutely. in India, people are not looking at me. Even today, when I go <laughs> to India, I have to tell people, uh, you know, it's okay. You can look me into the eyes and talk to me because again, I can't trust you unless I see that in Correct. your eyes. Absolutely. And I had to do the same thing with the United States. You know, uh, uh, we have covered business, we have covered in, inbound and outbound investments in India and US. Now, uh, let me turn to the, uh, ten, again, uh, your attention to the International Women's Day. Uh, there's a large body of research showing that female business leaders have very strong properties and success rates. Uh, but in both India and the US, girls and uh, young women are all too often discouraged from entering business. Mm -hmm. uh, what can, what can, what according to you can the societies do to improve that situation? Number one to US people, I would say, get used to the woman in a sari. <laughs> to Indian people, I say, 
take women seriously. Women, do women of India and United States, or globally, I would say, let's not portray ourselves as victims of circumstances or time or place or workplace. Uh, let's not talk about gender. Uh, we can talk about gender inequality. We can talk about percentage of leadership roles need to uh, increase. We should talk about uh, disparity among colored people. Good to talk about it. Good to always keep those things in the news, but don't paralyze ourselves. That's what is my message to the women is, please don't paralyze yourself. Uh, I think should they change the paral paralyzed situation to a purposeful situation. Let's create a purpose in life Absolutely. and let's lead ourselves because no one can do it for you. Only you can. So that's my message to the women. What is your boldest uh, vision? That is to me, um, boldest vision to me is belief in yourself. Be yourself, as I said before, persevere, go and uh, go very bold with your dreams. Uh, you know, as Walt Disney said, if you can dream it, you can do you it. Can do it. There is nothing a woman cannot do. Hamko Lakshmi ko ya orto ko sandariya ki uran nahi urke hame mastish ki uran urni hai. That's great message. That's great. Thank, thank you. Much. Yeah. Thank you. And with that, I thank you for inviting me on this International Women's Day and this opportunity for me. Uh, hopefully, uh, will aspire women to reach new heights Absolutely. and also inspire them to go for your dreams. This is my story. What is yours? Think about it. Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, Dr. Purnima Maurya, really many thanks, many, many thanks for your valuable time and insights. It was a pleasure talking to you.